So we're going to talk today about transposition or rearranging equations. Now what you often see is three, a three variable equation like this, d equals st, distance is speed times time. And what you often get is these nice little triangles here. Well I don't want you to use these triangles, okay? They're nice and easy to use and they tell you what the three equations are, but if you're going to have 20, 25 equations, then you're going to have to remember 20, 25 triangles. There's no point. Just know how to do transposition and you won't need to bother with all this. It's much easier. So let's start off. Let's say we're looking for s. Well, what's happening to s here? It's being multiplied by t. How do you stop s being multiplied by t? You divide it by t. And the golden rule, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. It doesn't matter what you do. You could multiply it by a billion. As long as you do it to the other side as well, that's absolutely fine. So we've divided that side by t, so we have to divide that side by t as well. These two t's cancel out, and we're left with s on its own. And if we tidied it up and put the s around the other side like it should be, there we go. s equals d over t. There's our equation. Uh, what if it was, let's go back to where we were before, what if it was t we were after? Exactly the same, t is being multiplied by s, so we want to get rid of this s. What do we do? If it's been multiplied by s, we divide by s. What we do to one side, we do to the other. These two s's cancel each other out, and we're left with t on its own. And let's tidy it up, let's put the t over the other side, there we are. So that's a case where um, multiplication. You're starting off with a multiplication and you just divide. It's very, very, very simple. But what if we're looking at a situation where you're starting with a fraction? So let's look at this one. Power is work done over time. Work is energy. Um, so power is work over time. We're looking for work here. We want to get work on its own. What's happening to work? It's been divided by t. And the rule here is with a fraction, if you want to get rid of a fraction, you multiply by the denominator. Okay, so let's do that. Let's multiply by the denominator. We've got multiply by t on both sides. T's cancel out, and you're left with w on its own is equal to p times t. Work is power times time. But what if we want to find the denominator, in this case, the little t here? Well, we start the same way. We multiply both sides by the denominator, and that gives us exactly the same equation that we had before. Now, we want t. So it's obvious what we need to do to get t. We've got to go one more step. t is being multiplied by p. So we divide by p, and you do the same to both sides, just like we did before. So you get this. Divide both sides by p. This p cancels this one out, and we end up with t on its own. And there we are. That's the equation, t equals w over p. Um, now, look at this. This is what we started with, and we wanted t. We wanted the denominator. But look what's happened. W stays where it is. You just swap these around. So quite simply, I've just explained why, but when you've got a fraction and you want to make the denominator of the fraction the subject of the equation, just swap these two around. Much, much, much easier to remember. Right, let's finally end up looking at the kinetic energy equation. So we've got more than three variables here. Ke, kinetic energy, is a half mv squared, a half the mass times the velocity squared. I'll go through an example. A 2 kilogram bowling ball has a velocity of 10 meters per second. Calculate the kinetic energy of the ball. Okay, so first of all, you do this half m bit. Okay, you multiply half by the mass. Now in this case, the mass is 2. A half multiplied by 2, a half of 2, of is what multiply means, is 1. So this whole section here in this blue box is just 1. So you could say this, kinetic energy is 1 multiplied by v squared. But you don't need to do that. You, you just assume that it's 1, so you don't need the number. So kinetic energy is equal to v squared. OK, where do we go now? Well, velocity was 10. So 10 squared, 10 times 10, is 100, 100 joules. OK, so do the half m bit, m bit first, and then multiply that by the v squared bit. It's fairly simple. Uh, the exam board might be a bit nasty at some point and ask you to, to find v, find the speed that this thing's going at, the velocity it's going at. Transpose the equation for v. Okay, let's go through this. First of all, let's get rid of that horrible fraction. We've got a half mv squared. Now, the way you get rid of a half is to multiply it by 2. Okay, so multiply both sides by 2. So we get 2 kinetic energy, 2 ke, is equal to mv squared. Okay? Multiplying a half by 2 gives you a whole, gives you a 1. So we get this. We get 2ke equals mv squared. That's that fraction gone. 
Now remember, we're after v, we're after v here, so let's now get rid of that m. Well, what's happening to v? It's being squared, but we'll sort that out in a minute. It's also being multiplied by m. So what's the opposite of multiplying it by m? That's going to be dividing it by m. So once again, you divide both sides. Now don't forget to do both sides, otherwise it's going to go wrong. And what you end up with is that m cancels that one out there, and you're left with v squared on its own. So we're getting really close. It's much tidier now. v squared. Let's tidy it up a bit more. Let's put the v squared on the other side where it should be. Just there. OK, we're nearly there. Now we've just got to get rid of that square sign. How do we do that? Well, we take the square root. That's the opposite. So we square root both sides. And there we are. That's what you get. v is equal to the square root of 2ke over m. And then you just feed your numbers into that equation, and away you go. OK, so get rid of your half first, then get rid of your m, then get rid of your square sign. OK, here we are then. Here's a few questions to uh, have a go at. If you can rearrange these equations, then you should get these questions right. Uh, pause the video right now, have a go at those questions, and then press play. And in just a second, the answers will flash up. OK, thank you very much for watching.